according to the book of John, chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. Good morning and welcome to St. Luke Union Church on this, uh, on this May 10th, on this fifth Sunday of Easter, on the day that we celebrate our mothers as, as Mother's Day. And as a pastor who, who deeply loves the congregation he serves, um, I miss you all. Uh, I miss you all because every time we're together, you, you give me energy, you give me light, you give me life, and uh, I, I've missed that. Uh, and I hope uh, and pray that we will soon be together again. Um, let, us, uh, let us join together in worship this day. Let us open our hearts to how Christ touches our hearts. And, and when we are touched, let us share that love and that grace and that peace with, with everyone that we can be around. Um, Hear these words. Let us offer spiritual sacrifices accepted to God through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Uh, Join me as we pray together. Almighty God in Christ, you have shown us the way. Reveal to us your truth and offer to us everlasting life. Keep our eyes upon him that we may see your path more clearly. Know your truth more fully and receive your life more abundantly. Through Christ who dwells in you and the Holy Spirit in eternal glory. Amen. Let us now enjoy the musical gifts of Doug and David uh, in our first hymn, which is um, God of Wonders. Water, earth, and sky. The heavens are your tabernacle. Glory to the Lord on high. God of wonders beyond our galaxy. You are holy. Oh 
Thank you, Doug and David. Whoever believes in Christ will not be put to shame. Confident in this promise, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Please join me with the prayer of confession. Almighty God, your word offers freedom from sin, but we confess that we have not obeyed your word. We have harbored malice toward our enemies. We have been deceitful in our relationships. We have been insincere in our commitments. Through gossip, we have slandered our friends. Forgive us our sins and lead us to genuine repentance. Help your children along for your pure spiritual milk that we may grow into the joy of salvation through Jesus Christ. Amen. Please take a moment of personal silent reflection. Sisters and brothers, once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Okay, kids, it's time to look at the screen because Reginald and Pastor Andy are here to share the wisdom for the day. Hey, Pastor Andy! How are you doing, Reginald? Oh, I'm doing great. I'm having such a great time out here. Yeah, we're, we're glad that you're here. Uh-huh. And, oh, and Pastor Andy? Yes, sir. I just wanted to say a big thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Because I, you've been taking care of me, and I even have jobs out here. I know. You have chicken jobs? Oh, yeah. I'm learning how to lasso a chicken. Yep, you haven't got it yet, but you're getting close. Well, your chickens are real. My chicken is stuffed. Right, and they're fast. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So you gave me lots of jobs, and you give me food, and you give me friendship. Yeah, and I'm glad you're here. You make things, um, interesting. Well, thank you, I, I think. Yeah, you're sitting here in my, in my, my room in my, uh... In my, I call it my man cave. I know. It's kind of more like a Reginald room now. <laughs> you know, Pastor Andy, you have lots of room. Yeah, we do have lots of room. Hey, that reminds me of a song. That, no, you know what? I know what the song is, and it's actually the scripture that I'm going to preach in just a few minutes from the book of John. Oh, okay, well, what's the scripture about? Well, it's about Jesus. He's, he's talking to his disciples. And um, he's telling them that God has a, has a house for them, a house that is filled with many rooms, a room for everyone. Wow, that's pretty, great. That's in the Bible? That's in the Bible, and that's what that song was after. you remember the song? A big, big house with lots and lots of room, and a big, big table with lots and lots of food, and a big, big yard where we can play football. Right, football. Oh. <laughs> what you do that for? It was the football. You asked for it. Oh. Yeah. So, um, it is a kind of a fun song, though. It is a fun song. But I think uh, it, it's also nice to think about with with what uh, with what's going on, and we're in. We're spending a lot of time in our house, our houses, and we're spending a lot of time in our rooms. Mm -hmm. It's really kind of neat to think about, well, the, f the fact that God has a, has a room for us too. And has enough room for everybody. For everybody. Wow. I think that's pretty neat. That is neat, Pastor Andy. It's uh, not only our room in our houses, but it's a our, our, our room in God's house. And God's house is a big, big house. With lots and lots of room. Yeah, <laughs> we've already done that. Yeah, you don't want to hit with the football again? <laughs> it kind of hurt. Right. <laughs> well, yeah, so I I'm glad you're here. There is lots of room for you here. And um, just remember that, that God has a spot for you, too. That's great. Hey, Pastor Andy, yeah. I want to say hello to everybody that's out there. All hello, right. everybody. Hello, kids. Hello. I miss you. I miss you, too. <laughs> I miss all those hugs and... And the pictures and the giggles and the... Oh, I miss the giggles. Right. There's lots of giggles. Mm-hmm. Hey, should we pray? We should pray. Okay. Uh, I'll pray. Okay. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you. Thank you. For giving us a place. For giving us a place. To call home. To call home. And a place. And a place. 
For our heavenly home. For our heavenly home. You are great. You are great. And for that we are thankful. And for that we are thankful. Amen. Amen. Hey, thanks, Pastor Andy. See ya, everybody. See ya. Lord, as we listen to your holy word, open our hearts to the power of your spirit. Call us out of darkness and lead us into your marvelous light. Amen. Today's epistle lesson is from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 2 through 10. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come into him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And, like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices accountable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you who, who then believe, he is precious, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the cornerstone of the corner. A stone that makes them stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had received mercy, but now, once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. the body. 
Why are his feet going? Why is his love not showing? Then there is a way. If we are the body, why are his arms reaching? Why are his hands healing? Why are his words teaching? And if we are the body, why are his feet going? Why is his love not showing? Then there is a way. Jesus is the way. Our gospel lesson for today is found in the book of John, chapter 14, verses 1 through 14. And I have uh, I've named not only the sermon, but this passage, In My Father's House. And it begins this way. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also, and you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you knew me, you know my father also, for now on you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, I have been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me. Do you not believe that I am in the father and the father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do. In fact, will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give great thanks, not only for your scripture, but for this day. A day we can celebrate our mothers. A day we can celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. A day that, that we can be illumined by your word. And when we are illumined, let us share those words with, with everyone we meet. Amen. So today, today is Mother's Day, and we're reminded how important our mothers were to our homes um, that we were each raised in. While on the same day, our scripture has Jesus speaking to his disciples about God having a home for them in heaven. As in, in my father's house, there are many dwelling places. Now I have to say that this is a beautiful image that should, well, I think should bring comfort to all of us. Now, I don't know if any of you have a dream home or a place that you would simply one day live, someday love to live. I mean, we all uh, different, have different imaginations and we all have different dreams, so I'm sure there, there are different types of dream homes. I mean, one person may daydream of, of living in a high-rise apartment in a large city overlooking a, a grand lake or a park. Others may dream of a cottage on the ocean's edge with the sound of waves uh, being a constant and the smell of that, that sea air that, 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 that's always there. For others, that dream home could be in the deserts of New Mexico or even in the Rocky Mountains somewhere in Colorado. Maybe your dream home is, is in the North Woods or in a ranch in Texas. I mean, I think we all have dreams, right? My dream home, personally, is, uh, is this, and, and you can tell I've thought about it a lot. 
40 to 100 acres of land, some two-thirds of that land being woods. Uh, the land should have a pond with, with fish in it. Um, there needs to be a house with a big front porch, uh, an open kitchen, an open um, family room, and finally, finally there needs to be a, a large barn or, or a shed, something I can escape to with, uh, with projects inside or someplace where I can store, I don't know, toys. So when you think about these words from the book of John, I mean, what is your image about this place, the place of my father's house? Now, I think the first time I read this passage, the image that came to my mind was that of a, of a huge hotel-like structure, maybe, I don't know, five or six stories tall, but stretched in a distance in, in either direction. Now, I don't know why this is, but for some reason, my image has also placed this heavenly house upon a backdrop of, of snow-covered mountains. But, but it also allowed for God to add new sections, new sections at either end as more and more people were welcomed into heaven. Now, I've heard other people describe this house in the image of a really large cruise ship as well. Or maybe you've just imagined, well, your dream home to be the gift of the Father's house in this passage. I mean, that would be fitting. But I would say that these images, well, they're probably pretty limiting to the vast mystery of God. And if you think about it, what type of dream home would, would someone who lived, say, a thousand years ago look like? I mean, it wouldn't be the image that I had, that's for sure. But then, well, then I began well, to look at this passage a little differently. I began to look at it a little differently when I started to break down the language and what the language actually meant. And, and, and after that, I began to better understand how Jesus, as the Son of God, would present this image of God's house to his disciples. And what I found is that if we only think of the Father's house as a physical place, then, then we're really missing a greater realization. I mean, do you really think that God merely wishes to reward us with a room and a very large heavenly house, whatever that heavenly house may look like? I mean, here's the issue with this passage that, that many of us perhaps have missed. Okay, the word house in verse 2 from today's reading, well, it can be translated to mean, well, it can mean house or mansion or cottage or apartment or barn or whatever people choose to, to physically live in. It can also be translated to mean home and family or shelter or, or gathering. In other words, one translation is a house and the other is a home. One is a noun, the other is a verb. And, and translations, well, they really support both. I love what, what Christopher Laporte writes about our homes and how they are different from, well, how they're different from a house. He says this, Finding that place we call home is something personal, yet something we take a part in together. It takes trust, a little risk, and a journey worth telling a story about. Home is something familiar, something safe, something comforting, a place full of shared memories, and something that, that we personally feel in unique ways. See, the story of a home is being told again and again, each time revealing something new. I, I like that image he, he paints. See, the support for home rather than physical home is this. See, the Greek word for home is formed from the root word abide, or, or rather to live in or remain with. And when we come to abide in something, well, then we're actually in relationship with that something. In this case, the home of God or the, our Father's house. So the verse has much to do with our relationship with God as it does with the place that we go to live with God. See, the disciples, they really don't understand what Jesus is attempting to teach them, and they really won't completely understand it until the resurrection of Christ, which will take place, well, sometime uh, in our reading. And why is this? Well, it's because, because they have God's Son with them, physically. 
They love Jesus and Jesus loves them. Why would they think that he would need to go anywhere without them? Or most assuredly, he, they would, would go with him as well. See, though, they are kind of tainted. They are tainted by well, an Old Testament understanding of God. A God that is perhaps thought to be judgmental or, or vindictive and he, or, or even angry. A God that only resides in the holy city of Jerusalem, in the temple, in the back room, the holy of holies. A God that is distant, a God that is untouchable. They're struggling with coming to know the true nature of God. And it's because of this, well, that they have constructed personal barriers to the relational commitment to God. See, they are, they're only looking to the past, and that's keeping them from seeing what lies ahead. Harry Truman often talked about a toy, a small wooden toy that was called the Flugy Bird. You should look it up. It's kind of a funny looking thing. And, when try, and he used to talk about the Flugy Bird when, when he was trying to give details of his vision for the future of the United States. See, this toy, again, it was goofy looking. Um, but around the Flugy Bird's neck was a label, and that label read this. I fly backwards. I don't care where I'm going. I just want to see where I've been. See, so in an effort to get a little clarity on Jesus' directions, right, about I will take you where we're going to go, Thomas speaks up. Thomas, the one who, who actually doubts the resurrection a few chapters from now, but, but the one that actually asked the question nonetheless. It's almost like, like he's the kid in school who always ask the question that no one else wants to ask because they'll, well, they, they'll feel embarrassed, but, but they're really happy that, that they did? See, the question that Thomas asks is simply, well, he's asking for directions, as in, where are you going? And if you're going someplace, can we have the directions? Jesus gives, though, one of those not-so-clear directions that only, well, even confuses Philip even more. Well, he says this, I am the way and the truth, and the life. And I just, in my mind, imagine the disciples holding, holding their smartphones, trying to load the address into, and to get the GPS coordinates. Yet Jesus gives them three very clear and dis distinct instructions. And in them, Jesus is not only revealing his true purpose, but also is showing the true nature of God. God has lived and demonstrated in the heart of Jesus. Have you ever, have you ever been given directions that, that don't seem to be all that complete, but, but you go in, out and, and try to find your way anyway, and you usually always do what? You always end up completely lost. So I remember uh, my first Sunday here at St. Luke Union Church as your pastor, and on that Sunday afternoon, I was taken way out into the country, north of Bloomington, for a grade five service of Ethel Weirman. And after completing the service, well, I asked someone directions about how to, to find Bloomington. I'd only been in town for some two days, and I wasn't sure where the town was even located. And this was something like the directions I was given. Well, y you head down on the road, that way a spell, and you go that away. Well, and as you drive, you, you're, you'll eventually come to, to, to a big old pine tree. And when you get there, there's, there's a road, and you should turn left. Now that road is going to wind and turn quite a bit. It'll go by a lake. Just, just stay on it. And, well, it'll get you to the highway, and, and you should be okay from there, right? Now I have to honestly say that, that I did get home, but I was pretty happy that I got home before dark. Now, when I was a kid... I remember geography class. I'm sure many of you did. I don't think that class is taught anymore. But a part of that class, we learned how to, to read maps. Things like, what's a compass rose? What's it for? How to understand scale. And to learn simple things like, did you know that odd-numbered roads go north and south, and even-numbered roads go east and west? I'm not sure if our youth know that. But with all the map in orienteering training, I took as a scout, I learned that the best way to get anywhere has always been for someone to take you there, someone to lead you. Jesus is telling the disciples that he is the guide. 
the one that will take them in all of humanity eventually to their, well, to their eternal heavenly home. Now, what he says may be confusing, but it is the true word of God from, well, the word of God. And because of him, all who believe will be granted their salvation. Jesus is making a biblical statement to what is known as atonement or salvation for those who profess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Jesus, through the caveat that he is the only way to God, then becomes revealing. This becomes revealing to the true nature of God, while at the same time revealing the depth of his relationship to God. Now, some people of faith, I know, are not fond of the limiting statements like this made by Jesus. I've often heard that scriptures like this seem to create a, a bit too exclusive club for, for those well, who get a room in the Father's house and, and those who don't. But this scriptural passage, well, I find it more reveals the nature of Jesus and therefore the true nature of God. And with that idea, Walter Bergman helps reflect or redirect us to God's grace and our, and our role in our salvation by saying this. He said, maybe the real issue is not whether people go outside the church. I'm sorry. Maybe people, maybe the real issue is not whether people outside the church are saved, but whether people inside the church have any sense of their distinctiveness. You see, for those of us who do proclaim Jesus as Lord and Savior, you see, we are distinctive because of our relationship with Christ and because it is reflective of the relationship between God and Jesus. Perhaps let me explain it a little further. In verse 13 for today, as Jesus seeks, um, seeks the disciples, well, he asks them to pray. And he asks them when they pray to pray in his name and know that, that when they do this and they request this, that whatever they pray will be granted by the Father. It's seemingly as if Jesus is establishing a formula for prayer, a kind of, I don't know, king and emissary type of a relationship. You know, if a king sends an emissary out to do something, that emissary had better have a clear understanding and a deep relationship with the king if he is to represent him in such well, large matters of state. Or if perhaps in this case, if we're going to pray in Jesus' name, we had better do our best to understand the nature and the pers person of Jesus, and therefore God as well. And what this then says is that prayer, well, it's really not a formula, but rather prayer is a relationship, a relationship that only grows as our faith grows and continues when we are eventually welcomed well, into our Father's house. So why then is this so important to understand? that the Father's house calls us to, to a deeper relationship with God? Well, let's bring us back to Mother's Day. Let's, let's use a Mother's Day type example. What if on this Mother's Day, our, our mothers wish to gather well, their entire families together to celebrate and to simply well, to be together? Also, on this particular Mother's Day, we're actually allowed to be together. Also, on this Mother's Day, well, it says this. What if your, your mother made arrangements for us all to be together? All had room, or all had simply a spot at the dinner table. And when it came time to sit down, to share, to eat together, there was an empty chair. There was an empty seat. In this case, whose heart do you think would be broken? The one who chose not to attend? Or the one who had prepared a place to abide in? What do, we, what do we do? What do we do if we, if we leave an empty room in our Father's house for eternity? One that was, was specifically designated for us. Well, I'll tell you what it does. It breaks the heart of God. It breaks the heart of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That Trinity, those three persons, all in perfect relationship to one another. The Father's house 
It has many rooms. Go, be welcomed into yours and know that God awaits for you to be in relationship with you for eternity. Amen.
you didn't know the title to that song, it was I Love to Tell the Story. And as we, uh, as we gather, as we come today to, uh, to pray, there's a few things I, I would like to, to, uh, to point out. This is a, a prayer card. Actually, we have new versions of this as well. And uh, I know that you are not here in the sanctuary to pull one out of the pew in front of you and to write to either someone on the prayer chain or someone perhaps you haven't seen or missed here in church. But I will say that uh, you are doing a wonderful job of, of communicating with one another writing letters, sending emails, text messages, whatever it is, I continually hear stories of, uh, of calls that people have made to one another, uh, stories of, of how they're getting by, um, what they uh, perhaps uh, miss most. Um, so I, I encourage you to continue to, to care for one another uh, in ways that, uh, that reach out and touch and share the love of God. Um, so let's pray um, this morning. I, I invite you to turn in prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, glorious Son, ever-present Holy Spirit, you are a God of resurrection, and we ask that you hear our prayer this morning. We pray for the church throughout the world. We pray for a church that perhaps has empty pews, but it is a church that still is held together by your love and your care. It is not the building, it is not the sanctuary that makes the church. It is the people who are held within it. And Lord, that church professes and honors the risen Christ. We ask that we are faithful witnesses to you, that we can build in relationship with you, and therefore build in relationship with, the, with God and with the Holy Spirit. Lord, we pray for, well, for pastors. I pray for my pastor friends who, who struggle, as I do, with not being able to see or to hold or simply to touch their parishioners, not being able to stand in front and help and care and teach. It's not only frustrating, but it is also discouraging. Please give each one of our church leaders the strength to continue to care. Lord, we also pray for, for our government. We pray for our president. We pray for our governor. We pray for our local officials that the hard decisions they make are seen as ones that are good for all, that will help protect one another that will take us through to the other side of this pandemic. Lord, we, we pray for, for rain and for sun in the right measure, especially here in central Illinois as farmers continue to plant, as they continue to, to hope and to look for what fall will bring as far as their crops, crops that will feed and nurture. And Lord, we also pray for the sick. We pray for those who have contracted the virus that, that you give them the strength to fight. We pray for those who are, are battling illnesses and diseases. Give them the strength. Give them the understanding or the wherewithal that, that they at least know that you stand beside them. Lord, we ask for your care. We ask for your wisdom we ask for your grace. We ask for your love. Help us to continue to understand and to grow and know that you are the way and the truth and the life. It is through you, who through our relationship with you, helps us to see the light, the light of God. And Lord, in one voice, let us pray together when we say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Henceforth in fields of conquest Thy tent shall be our home Through days of preparation Thy grace has made us strong And now, O King Eternal We lift a battle song Lead on, O King Eternal shall cease, and holiness shall whisper the sweet amen of peace, for not with swords loud clashing, nor roll of stirring drums, with deeds of love and mercy, the heavenly kingdom comes. Lead on, O King Eternal, we follow not with fears, for gladness breaks like morning, where'er thy face appears. Thy cross is lifted o'er us, we journey in its light, the crown awaits the conquest, the honor, O God of might. Uh, a few announcements before we uh, I, I offer the the charge and the benediction. Uh, the first two are is our first two announcements is that I have begun my Monday morning Bible study class. Uh, it begins at 12 o'clock. Uh, we study, uh, what we've started doing is studying the lectionary text for the, for the next week. Uh, next week's lectionary text is also in the book of John, so we'll be studying that. You are welcome to join us. It's a Zoom call, uh, and if you need a link, you can uh, contact Lisa Dornbush, our office manager. I believe there also was an announcement that, will, uh, that has gone out on the prayer chain as well. Um, also, on uh, Wednesday at noon, we're having what I am calling a prayer meeting. And the prayer meeting is just a time to check in, a time to, to see one another virtually, but to see one another, to hear the, their voices, um, to, uh, to see how they're doing, to check in. And then it is also a time of prayer. That is also a Zoom meeting, and uh, you are welcome to have that link and to share that link with those who you think might uh, enjoy that time of prayer. Again, it went out on a, a prayer chain email as well as it's available from Lisa in our church office. Um, that being said, uh, the Presbytery of Great Rivers has, uh, has uh, offered and we have accepted a, a gift of, of paying for Zoom, um, uh, which is a conference call system. So if you have meetings here at church or if you want to interact with uh, church members, please let us know. We will set up a Zoom meeting for you and uh, it, it will have no time limit. If you use Zoom um, for, in the free version, you only get 40 minutes and then it just cuts you off. So those are a few things. Um, if you are in need of something, please let the church office know. Let me know. Um, if you uh, uh, want to reach out in some way to care for one another, uh, I can help you and direct you to, to who may need a little extra help as well. So... That being said, I, I just want you to go about your week understanding that uh, the Father's house is, is not simply a physical place, but well, it's, it's, also, well, it's also an action. It's also our home. And a, and a house and a home um, can be the same thing, but they also can be so many, they can be so different as well. And it is through that home, through the home that we are called to um, by Jesus that we can come to understand uh, our relationship, not only with Christ, but with God and with the Holy Spirit. And with that, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, may you be blessed, may you be kept, not only today, not only tomorrow, but forevermore, and until we are together again. Amen. <laughs>